you die there. There's no cell comms, there's, there's no paths, there's no roads. You just have to bury the oak there. Yes. We were some of the first people to really be attacked by pirates. Wow. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so basically we were, all I remember was they, they swung around and they saw these Zulus coming at them. And all I heard was, amigo, amigo, amigo. And these Zulus just got in there. And this, the next thing we were hit by a, a, a tsunami. A tidal wave. Sorry? Whoa, whoa, a whoa, tidal whoa, wave, whoa, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So casual. <laughs> probably yeah. came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. When people want to join me, there's, there's no signing an indemnity because there's no guarantees that you're going to come back alive. But out of all the crazy things and adventurous things that you've done, why would you? We went to look for the Shubal stalk, which is one of the most highly <gasps> sought after. So every bird that wants to find the Shubal stalk, okay. which we found on day one. Wow. wow. To see the gorillas for one hour, you pay 50,000. 50,000 what? Rands. So then, then suddenly I see my boat starts to drift to the right. Oh my. Mm. And I've read stories about Axe getting charred by crocs. So the next thing, the boat starts to tilt like us. Mm, then, then I thought, I'm, oh, this is me. I've done all these trips. Can we talk about the adventure? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what's the criteria for for that, to be an, an adventure Yeah, race. so basically, so adventure racing, as I say, is a, is a multidiscipline. So now, there are very few people in the country that can horse ride mm. and mountain mm. climb and ice climb. So you've got to use an ice axe, roped up ice axe. And we climbed the highest active volcano in the world, Jeez. which is 6,000 meters, of which 4,000 was ice. Sure. Okay, so then you've got a crampons, ice axes, roped up. So, so you go from one discipline to another. And it's in the sense that it, it, in those days, it was the toughest race on earth because it's 10 days nonstop. Mm -hmm. So you're racing day and night. Mm -hmm. So basically, like I did Iron Man for seven years, I did Comrades seven years, I've done the August the Doozy, I've two oceans, you know, everything um, cycled across Lesotho. So you must have been like, I need something. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I wasn't well in the head. You, yeah. you were the Goggins at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, were like, yeah. So I you had to be. So, it's it's more about it's a, it's like a it's like a mental thing because you get to a point where your body wants to shut down but your mind says you've got to carry on because remember there are five of you in a team mm. so there, there are four other oaks there that you need to now not let them down so then you so like like horse riding you ride for two days and two nights nonstop my goodness yeah and and, and you've got to catch your horse so. Sorry? <laughs> You've got to catch it. Yeah, so you're in Argentina. Oh, you know. you, it's a wild horse. No, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it is a wild horse, but it's in a, it's in a corral. Okay. So they give you a, a then you've got to lasso it. So and you can't start your, your event until you've caught your horse. So you've got to run around and try and lasso that damn thing, and, and it's wild. Oh, my word. And then you, you catch it, and then you've got to put the reins on, you've got to put the saddle on. And once you've all caught your horses, there were teams of that, and, and, and um, that, that team, there were, so, both two of the races we rode horses. So then you've got to ride for nonstop for, I say, as I say, for two days and maybe two nights. But then at night, the one race you couldn't um, go at night because it's too dangerous. And that was in Ecuador. So then you'd have to sleep holding your horse the whole night. Because from six till oh six, you're not allowed to ride your horse because it's too dangerous. Then you've got to hold that horse all night. And but, but sorry, sorry, Ian, to yeah. interrupt you. Um, in terms of this thing called an adventure race, so there's stages, yeah, right? Yeah. And in these stages, they'll say, all right, cool, stage one, you're going to use this. Stage yeah, two, you're going to yeah, use this. Yeah. But you have to make the cutoff time in this location exactly. of stage one. Oh, Yeah, so tick. basically, okay, for, for an example, Ecuador. We started off with a 16-hour paddle. Now, if you think doozy is hard, you, you start hours. off in the morning and you paddle until you get to the end of that section, that leg, which is sea kayaking but on a lake. And the lake is, is like um, minus one degrees, the water. Um, just not frozen, but so you can still paddle. Mm -hmm. And then you paddle. We started at eight o'clock in the morning and we only got to our destination just before midnight. Then you My go from, goodness. so you get out of your, 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 your sea kayak, which is on the lake. And then you, um, then you transition uh, into, onto your horses. But then at midnight, you've got to swim across a frozen river with your, ba with your backpack, which is now in a, in a waterproof container. Yeah. And then you've got to jump in that river at midnight and swim yeah. across this raging river. 
Mm. So five of you, one at a time, you jump in. And then you get to the other side. Now you're freezing cold. You've got to put your kit on now because you've got to start horse riding now. Yeah. In that race, we were allowed to ride at night. Yeah. And um, we started riding. We got all our horses, started riding. And then we had gone for about 10 minutes and Lindy got bucked off, our girl, because we had one girl in the team. What does and bucked off mean? It, it uh, chucked her off. Oh. Reared up. Yeah. But it reared up so badly that it actually threw her off and then its back legs came up and it landed on top of her. Jeez. And by that time, we'd been paddling for 16 hours nonstop and oh. sw swam this river. So I thought to myself, well, she, hopefully she bails because if she bails, then we've all got to go home. Mm. <laughs> I was so buggered. I was like, I'll go home now. Mm. And I promise you, this thing landed on her and I, call it, I, I just heard the air go out of her system and the horse ran away and next thing she's up and she chased that bloody horse and she caught it. And then we got back on those horses. You've got to be carried. built differently. You've got to be, you've got to be completely um, built differently. So there was a guy, and I'd love you to interview him as well one day. The mm -hmm. next, if you're looking for someone to, mm -hmm. his name is Steve Camp. So he's written all the stories about Doozy, Comrades, um, Midmore Mile, Two Oceans. He's the author of all those books. Sure. Wow. Um, he was in, um, uh, in the um, Special Forces. Wow. And, and he's an incredible person to interview. And him and I were in all three races together. Only two of us were ever in all three of the, those races, and he was one of them. And he's a guy you, you should yeah, interview as well. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Do they still have adventure races? They won this year. They do. They've just had the world champs now in South Africa. Okay. But now it's only five days. What is it like? You go to the Kruger from… No, they started, they did it in a PE, a PP, between PE and East London. Okay. And I think they threw a bit of the wild coast in. But it's Jesus. like nowadays it's five days. Um, Chills. Amateurs for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's still rough. No, I, I, you know, I was never a, like a top runner or top doozy or top mm. whatever. I, I was just one that could do everything. Mm. As, and you, the question you asked me earlier, how do you how do, you do this? Mm. Well, there are very few people in South Africa that can climb a mountain, can ride a horse, can whitewater raft, can sea kayak, can ride a bicycle, mm. um, and, you know, do all those disciplines. So it's very, you've got to find that particular type of person. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we, we managed to find guys. And obviously ice climbing, no one in South Africa can ice climb. Because sure. I mean, yeah. where are you going to find yeah, us? Yeah. So we, and, and in these races, you've got to send a CV. So you've got to, you've got to send them a CV and, 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 and you've got to be tested. Like they, they'll take you to the together and they'll, mm. you're on a, on a raft and they'll throw you out. And then you've got to, make your way back into the raft and turn it upside down or get it, you know, so it's, yeah. um, so you can keep going and no one drowns. And then obviously in ice climbing, we, we, we just bulldusted them. We practiced on grass. Oh, really? So none of us had actually walked on ice <laughs> prior to getting there. <laughs> and we did it two years in a row. We did Ecuador and we did um, mm. Argentina. So we were actually in Patagonia, south of, south of South America. And then we did, um, yeah, we, we, we did that race. And, I can. I never forget. We we put our. We started our, our ice climb at two o'clock in the morning, because that's when the, the, the ice is the hardest, and the safest to walk on it. So mm. your crampons actually can dig in. And we'd we'd, we'd walked for two hours from. Uh, they called it a refugio, which is where we we transition from the hike into the to the climb, the ice climb. And um, we started hiking, and we weren't roped up yet. And we got to a point, and there was a French guy there because these the raid goal was obviously French. And he said to us, okay, rope up, rope up. And we're like, we're all looking at each other and like, mm. like how to do, do this? You know, well, like, well, what is that? Yeah, it's like two, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Now, like, and we've got to, you know, you've got to put it because you've got to put a um, harness Honest, on, yeah. Yeah. crampons, ice axe, get, and it's minus 35 degrees. Mm. So My goodness. we're all looking at each other. And this, this mountain guide comes across to us and he says to us, you beginner. We're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Like, we know what you're doing. No, 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 no. You're a beginner. So I said, okay, right. So then he roped us up. Okay. And he just said, keep going. And it was incredible. Yes. I mean, we, we climbed 6,000 meters on ice. Wow. And yes. I, I mean, none of us had I've ever walked on ice. Yes. And so the, the rule was that there would be it's a five in a team and three of you had to summit. And um, you have we, to make the top. Yeah, to the top, yeah. Mm. And on the way, we, so in our team, we had two doozy winners, Kevin White and Wendy White. They both won the doozy, I think, 10 times each. Jeez. And they um, married each other. They married each other eventually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seeing each other that regularly. Yeah. 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 Let's just get it hooked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it didn't take her 
oh, I reckon two hours and she bailed. Really? Yeah, you know, she bailed out. But you're only allowed to bail at a, at a, a mountain rescue spot oh. where there's a tent. So then they say to you, okay, um, cut the rope, cut the rope. And we said, yeah, cut the rope. They cut the rope. Then she's got to go into the tent and it waits for you to come down. Then we carried on for about another hour. And then our team captain, John Barnes, he just said, I, I can't carry on. And he played eighth man for college first team. Jesus. Brutal man. He played in that 79 team that only, well, they were unbeaten. Um, I played in the team with him, actually. Sure. And um, eventually they said, cut the ropes, cut the rope. And then Steve and I now this, and, and Kevin, the three of us. Oh, there's three of you, yeah. We, we carried on, yeah. And uh, whew, a brutal, eh? I mean, you can, I mean, you, there's no oxygen. Yeah. You know, you're just below Everest. And um, you just, it's one foot at a time. Eh? Just like, and then we've got crampons mm. roped up. You've got ice axes. You've got to climb sections. And uh, we, we'd got to the, the last checkpoint on the mountain. And uh, like I, I think Steve is tougher than me. And uh, we got to that point, and we so the, the summit was another ten meters. And we got to the checkpoint. We had our passports because you got a passport. They stamped us, and then they said summit is there if you want a summit. So you can say you've summited. It's, quite a, it's called Cotopaxi, mm. and it's in Ecuador. And Steve said, No, nah, no, nah, can't. can't even you go you ten, get all the way nah, up there. Nah, he said, I can't go ten meters. I said, In Campo. 10 meters, dude. We, we're going another 10 meters. He said, I cannot go. So I said, come on, you, you'll, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. And we and, he, and I got him to go and we did that last 10 meters. And that's how hard it is. 10 meters. He, would, he mm. couldn't do it. Yeah. So yeah, we, we managed to summit there. But Ian, why why didn't you just join the army? I was in the army. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was in the army. Yeah. Yeah. And our years, we had to go to do mm. basics. And so I was in Pochestrum. Okay. Um, but then what I'd, what I'd done is three years, um, a year prior to be joining the army, I'd signed on a ship in Durban Harbor mm. and I worked for a year as a sailor. Mm. So I sailed around the world. Um, you, I went all over the world, uh, United States, Europe, um, Africa, right up Mozambique, mm. down to Cape Town, um, Southwest Africa, um, Mauritius, and... So, yeah, I traveled around the world. Um, mm. We were some of the first people to really be attacked by pirates. Wow. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so basically we were in... Um, oh, Abitresa, sorry. Yeah. Just bring, so yeah, ba- you can move this thing. Oh, can you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I keep yeah. Tell us about the pirates. So yeah. basically we were, um, we were in Europe and um, we'd loaded whiskey um, and champagne and red wine and oh, white that's, wine that's big. in, in, in um, Liverpool. And then we had gone across to France and we'd got more whiskey, red wine, and we had big vats as well, big drums of whiskey. And from our last port was uh, in Spain, where we loaded. So we did France, um, Spain, and, and, Euro, and um, Liverpool for this, this wine and, sh- and whiskey and champagne and that. Then we we're going to go down to Panama Canal. And we went through the Panama Canal and we came out on the other side, the, uh, on the west coast of South America yeah. and into, into Colombia. And uh, I mean, it's, it's like it's lawlessness there, like mm. of the worst. Drugs. Oh, drug. You know, yeah. Bogota. Yeah, yeah, Bogota yeah. Bogota is yes. a drug capital of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, but we didn't go to Bogota, but we went to various other ports. But uh, so we had to wait for our turn to go into the harbor. But now you're on a river because those rivers, you can steam up those rivers for up to like 15, 16 hours on these big, I was on a 16,000 ton ship huh. and we were full of whiskey and wine and whatever. And then we had an anchor on the river and um, they'd warned us that there are pirates around. They call them river pirates, mm. not sea pirates. So, um, so then we had hung these big cluster lights because we had anchor around the ship so that we could keep an eye on these pirates. And uh, because I was a junior there and I was just a deckhand, so my shift was from two to four in the morning. Uh. So my job was to walk around the ship by myself mm. and just to make sure that no pirates came on board. Mm. And, um, and I'd gone up forward, up the front of the ship, and I suspected something was not right. So I, I gave the guy in the, on, the, on, the, on the bridge uh, who was on bridge watch. I said to call, I said, Graham, are you struck, throwing something at me? Or I said, no, no, nothing. So I said, well, something's, not, something's odd here. And um, anyway, so my ship finished at four. And then I told my guy, hey, something's, the guy that took over from me, something's not right. And um, 
So I went to bed and the quarter past four, he came running into, into our cabins and he said, pirates on board. On board? On board, yeah. And uh, so I ran downstairs because we had the big Zulu sailors. Mm. Uh, I mean, the bosun, our bosun was like a six foot seven Zulu. Muscle, beast. Like, a beast of note. Yeah. And uh, they were all drunk because they'd been drinking Bacardi. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you can buy South American buy mm. Bacardi, white rum. Yeah. You know, like we, we paid like 10 rand for five liters. Sure. And uh, so, so those acts were all liquid. So I woke them all up. I said, pirates on board. And they came out with their knob carries and their sticks and, their, and, uh, and we ran up to the front of the ship. And I was like a lighty. I mean, I just finished at college. Mm. So I, like, I was hanging around at the back. I wasn't going to get involved in this rumble. And I watched <laughs> and these Zulus ran in there. And these pirates were actually had broken our locks on our holds mm. and they were stealing all our stuff. And they were passing it down to a boat down, down the, so got a long hook. Mm. And they hook it on, on, on your bulwark, on your, on your ship. They, they climb up this thing onto your mm, ship and they mm. do it within seconds. Mm. And they were stealing our stuff. And, and uh, all I remember was they, they swung around and they saw these Zulus coming at them. And all I heard was, amigo, amigo, amigo. And these Zulus just got in there and they stuck and they just shied these oaks. Yeah, what do they look like? Because I'm thinking Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah, yeah, they're very similar to those oaks. Really? So really? I thought yeah. they were the Somalian type no, no, guys. No, no, no. This, is, this is river pirates, bro. Oh, hectic. Like Latino guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amigo, yeah. amigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amigo, kind of like, yeah. like you. Yeah. Kind of like me, like yeah. amigo. <laughs> and these like, all I remember was that one at a time they jumped off the ship. Yeah. And remember, it's a high ship, eh? Because now we had anchor, um, you know, we, we've only got, we haven't got heavy stuff on. We've got whiskey and wine. And these guys just all jumped off one at a time. And I could hear them plopping into the water. Mm. And they had a little boat there. And I can still remember it now to this day. That engine starting and these guys were gone. Eh? Mm. And what was interesting was, so they stole a lot of our stuff that we needed to operate the ship with. Oh, no. So now we didn't have that stuff. So when we went ashore, because now we came alongside, all our stuff was on the, on the key there for sale. For sale. Oh, yeah. my word. Yeah. And uh, crime? Pull up, yeah, yeah. But surely up. what I mean is when you guys are there, there's no jurisdiction. So you could have actually, is that, there no jurisdiction on, 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 in, in the sea? On open water, there is. Open water? No, no, there's, 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 uh, there it's, it's safe when you're out at sea. Yeah. Yeah. So anywhere you're really at anchor. Uh -huh. uh, but but uh, obviously in Nigeria, Somalia, mm. those guys come alongside your ship. Mm, and then sure. they, they just shoot you. Yeah. But, but we... I mean, when I was, I was obviously doing bridge watch as well, because then even when you're alongside, you've got to do your two hours mm, sure. at night. So it, either, it was either six to eight, eight to 10, uh, 10 to 12, two, 12 to two, two to four, four to six. Um, when we were there, when I stole a loaf of bread on, on the quayside, and these like shot him stone dead. Properly. That was it. You stole that loaf of bread a year, a criminal. For and shot him a dead. loaf of bread. Yeah, they shot him dead. One of your guys? No, no, one of, one of a local guy. Yeah, oh, local guy there. Yeah. He stole bread from you guys. No, he stole it from a shop. Yeah, so wow. they 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 yeah, witnessed yeah, this. And the, and the army was there. Yeah, but but we so we, we so when we were alongside, we also had to do hold watch, so to make sure that all the uh, the they call them stevedores, don't drink the alcohol because mm. now you know you got whiskey, red wine, champagne, mm. everything. So we we had go down. So I'd be sent down to the lower hold, where they're meant to be loading it onto cranes and taking it out and taking it ashore. So we went down there and. I looked at these oaks and they just grab a bottle of whiskey and they just crack it like it mm. in front of you. And they just take a swig and you, and you just sit back and you say, like, no, no problem. Mm. Uh, no stories. Know, I'm just doing my job here, yeah, but yeah. you go for it. Mm. And eventually we'd get down there and we'd crack our own bottle of white wine or red wine mm. and, and drink, drink merrily while they're stealing and, and there's nothing you can do. Because wow. they'll kill you there. And exactly. And how long were you at sea at, I was at time? sea? I was at sea for a year there. Wow. When I was traveling, so I was on a tram ship, so I tramped around the world. So basically, when you're on a tram ship, you've got no destination. So like when we left South America, we're empty. So, um, and then like maybe like three days before you offloaded in South America, then they'll tell you right now, you've got to sail across back across to say Hamburg in Germany. Mm. Then you sail 12 days across to Hamburg mm. and then load up there again. And then they'd say to you, right, off to New York. Then Your passport must be for filled. Fully stamped, eh? Yo. Yeah. And then so we just, I just tramped around the world. But then it became too much, you know, like being college boys, you know, all I thought about was green grass and watching college play rugby. I mean, mm. I still go almost every Saturday. Mm. So like you missed that, you know. And then mm. I came back and then the army na nailed me. I said, no, I must go to army. So I went up to Potchefstroom and did my, my um, basics there. And then while I was there, they like, Wanted to know, like, like, why are you a little bit older than the rest of the acts? Well, first, I plugged twice at school. So 
I'm a little bit older. <laughs> so I was a captain of the first team rugby for, <laughs> for a good five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. I plugged, plugged there. And then, um, yeah, then I went to sea. And then they said to me, well, you know, like, like, why are you in the army if you've, you've been a sailor for a year? Mm, yeah. That's a good question. I, I did tell them that. And they said, no. And then they sent me off to Saldana. And then I joined um, ASC Rescue. And um, I was based at um, uh, the reconnaissance uh, for Reiki, which is in, down in, in Langamon. Mm. And then I did ASC Rescue, uh, rescuing yachts. And I worked quite a bit with the Reikis. Um, yeah, and then I spent my, ne my next two years there. In yeah. AC Rescue, though, what was the, were there any rescue. crazy things you experienced there? Yeah, yeah, we had to go and rescue yachts and that, that has lost their sails. Yeah. Um, and then they were just, they, they, were, they, they were basically legless, you know what I mean, sailless. Yeah. So they're just drifting around the ocean. So oh. they send a mayday, and then we'd shoot out there with our AC Rescue boat. And I could drive the thing, obviously. Yes. And we'd go out there and we'd go and tow them back into, into a harbor, either in Cape Town or depending where they were, Alexander Bay, Langabon. Um, yeah, we'd rescue those. The, the yeah. sea is a very interesting place, eh? It's yeah. incredible, um, yeah. And I've, I've been caught up in all these documentaries with yeah. the sharks yeah. and the great yeah. whites yeah. and the megalodons. Yeah. Were you, were you able to spot any massive monsters in the ocean yeah. during your time? Yeah, well, I think the, 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 the craziest thing, I mean, obviously we saw all the flying fish and, and, and humpback whales and, and all mm. that sort of stuff. But the craziest thing was um, I was, on, I was on, on the normal night shift. It was probably, I think it was a two to four. Mm. No, it was actually a 12 to two. And so basically you've, you've got the captain who sleeps because now he's not really in charge. He's in charge of the ship. But, mm. So you've got a, like a, a first mate on board, a second mm. mate who's mm. the navigator and whatever. So then you work with him. So you do your two hours. You go up to, onto the bridge and you look out for objects, lights, uh, ships, whatever. And um, one night we were there and uh, like I'm, so I'm standing there and I'm daydreaming and thinking about rugby and college and chicks and stuff. <laughs> and uh, the next thing we were hit by a, a, a tsunami, a tidal wave. Sorry? Whoa, whoa, a whoa, tidal whoa, wave, whoa, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So casual. <laughs> probably yeah. came out of nowhere. <laughs> came yeah. out of nowhere. So we were just like sailing along quite comfortably. Next thing, this tidal wave just hit this uh, ship and the whole ship just stopped dead in its tracks and it shuddered like that and slowly that wave just carried on moving past and then and then it was like for five minutes and then suddenly it was deathly calm again and you guys must have been like what the hell, the hell? yeah we were the only two awake because everyone else was dosing because they were sleeping and did you see it or was it like no i didn't see it no, we didn't see it is it, it like a, is it like is a, it tsunami? an earthquake so, yeah there'd been an earthquake somewhere maybe yeah. out at sea and uh and so this thing which just came through as a tidal wave and it hit Jeez. the ship Stopped us dead in our tracks. The whole ship shuddered and it went past us. And then another time we were sailing from Durban uh, to a place called Nakala, which is in uh, northern Mozambique and past Ma Maputo. And uh, we knew there was a cyclone at, on, on the land. And uh, in fact, I was still, in those days, I was, I was still at 18, I was still on Standard 8 at college. Sure. So I used to work because we had no money as a family. So I used to work during the holidays and I got a job on a ship when I was a standard eight at college. Mm. And I did a trip up to Northern Mozambique. So I was just like lighty, I was 16. And um, so we could see in the radar, we could see that there was a, a, a cyclone on the land. So generally speaking, they'll, they'll dry up if they're on land because they need moisture and that to keep mm. going. You did geography at school, eh? No, no, you I didn't. Plugged I didn't, it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't Me yeah. too. Plugged it. That's cool. I plugged it. I plugged it. So I plugged man. That's why you went to see Roger. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Mr. Shepherd. Yeah. So, um, so we thought this thing would dry up. So we were sailing up uh, past Maputo, just off Bazaruta Islands, and this cyclone moved in front of us. And the next thing you could see this thing in the radar. And by that time, we couldn't get out of it. Mm. So we went into the vortex, which is, you know, the outside of the cyclone. Mm. You've got the vortex and you've got the eye in the middle. Yes. The eye of the That's like where that's, thing. yeah. It's yeah. calm. Yeah. So we hit this vortex. And uh, then we went into that thing. And then we had to go through that and then into the eye. But what was interesting is in this eye, because it had started on the land, had millions of birds. Because sure. the birds couldn't get out of the eye. So they, they were, just chill in so the that, So they were flying around. Yeah. And it came across like that and it came onto the sea. So as we were sailing, so all these birds landed on the ship. 
and they couldn't get off because every time they tried to fly off, the vortex yeah. would throw them back onto the ship. Yeah. We, we spent seven days and seven nights in that cyclone. Off. Eventually, the ship was going backwards because we, we lost uh, our, our autopilot. So we, we had the same big Zulu sailors with it driving that wheel. Mm. But we, we, we were making no progress because the storm was so severe. Mm. Um, and it was called Cyclone Angela because it, it was the first um, cyclone of the year. Mm. You know, cyclones go A, B, C, mm. so. Mm. And they always chicks' names. Yeah, there's a reason. There's a reason. For that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, we spent seven days and seven nights in that cyclone, and and I, I wrote a diary. I can't find it anymore, unfortunately, but it was bloody interesting because yeah, we 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 thought the ship was going to sink, mm. but we made it through, and uh, all I remember was going to sleep at night, like when I wasn't on 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 bridge watch, it was like waking up and hoping that the storm would have gone, and it just never Still did. There. Then what actually happened, so we were in the vortex, we went into the eye, so all we knew we had another vortex to go. This whole thing doubled around us again. So we had to go through the vortex, Square the one. second eye, and the third vortex. And we came out the other side. And it was, and I always remember it was on Christmas Day, mm. I looked in that radar, and I could see us as a ship right in the middle of that eye. Sure. Like that now. Did, you any, did you ever lose anybody in all these adventures that no. you've been on? No, you know, like this adventure not. race as well. No, Nobody's it, died, eh? No, you know. Wow. So I've done all these wild trips through Africa. Mm. Um, obviously, I've just done this one. Yeah, we we want to yeah, talk about that. I've, yeah. done, I've done. I've done. Mm. Uh, I've done probably eight or ten, um, and this was just the last one. Mm. And um, yeah, you know, when people want to join me, like I say to them, yeah, you can join me, but you know, there's there's no signing an indemnity. Because there's no guarantees that you're mm. going to come back alive. Because mm. remember, we're going to remote, remote areas, mm. especially Mozambique. Um, like now, we were in uh, this trip, the last trip we did, we 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 flew from D uh, Durban to Joburg, Joburg to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. We landed there, and then from there we had no wheels, and we made our way from Addis Ababa into Uganda, um, and then Uganda we went to Rwanda to find the the gorillas. Then from Rwanda, we went back into Uganda. Then we went down to Kenya. Then we went through Tanzania, bought a train across Tanzania. Then we went down into Malawi. All taxis, buses, ferries, just local transport, mm. eating the local foods. And then we crossed Lake Malawi into Mozambique. And we walked down um, Lake Nyasa, which is incredibly remote, mm. uh, right down the lake. And then we came out at the bottom of Lake Malawi and came back into Malawi and we finished in Lalongwe and then we flew home. Mm. But those, those sections, I mean, I did it with Chad and I did it with Speedy. And it's quite interesting. Um, I've done it and like I've sailed it, not what I wanted to do because Chad got mm. sick, so I had to try and find a boat. We sailed up Lake Malawi in the middle of the night with raging seas, oceans. Um, it's a lake, actually. Mm. And uh, so there's no guarantee you're going to make it out, you know. Um, and like so Speedy at that stage was, I think he was 16 and Chad was probably 18. And we sailed up through the night with just with a little 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 dow with three local sailors and just the, two, the three of us. And we sailed up through the night through Lake Lake um Lake Malawi. So they Lake Malawi called Lake Malawi, and then in um in Mozambique they call it Lake Nyasa. It's the right. same lake. And uh yeah, it's just incredible. So you you your your life is always on the edge, you're living yeah. on the edge all the time. And I spoke to some of the guys there, the local guys, and they remembered me. And mm. I said to them, you know, like, when was the last Zungu year? You know, because they called <laughs> us Zungus. Like, when was the last Zungu year? He says, no, you were the last Zungu. Really? Yeah, he reckons, no. Uh, we, so, like, we've just done that same walk now. Mm. And those people even said, like, we were the last they'd seen as well. It's so incredibly remote. Sure. You remember those areas there? Like they have concessions, hunting concessions there. Mm -hmm. So the local Safkins and that go up and they organize a concession that those concessions are 500,000 hectares each. Wow. So you get a concession of 500,000 hectares. Remember that there in that area in northern Mozambique, around Lashinga, that area, life hasn't changed in a million years there mm. because you still got lions, leopard, elephant that have they've never seen humans. Mm. It's so wild there. So remote. Mm. So remote. It's mm. incredibly remote. 
And the one trip that we did um, with uh, Toombi, I don't know if you remember, Ryan Tyra. Mm, he played mm. f- seconds rugby. He was also a rough man, wild <laughs> man like his old man. And um, we, had, we, had, we had organized, so I've done, as I said, I've done so many of these trips. This was just one of the sections. And we had, we, we'd flown to northern Mozambique to a place called Ashinga, and then we were going to go down to the lake, and then we are going to sort of basically do the same walk that Speedy and, and Chad and myself had done. But then, um, then the guy we were staying with said, no, why don't you change your plan and I'll take you down there in my bucky and then you, I'll take you on a boat and we can, go, we can go up the lake and then I'll chuck you out and there's a nice path and you can walk through the bush instead of sort of walking in the same area that you did last time. I said to the guys, yeah, should we do that? Oh, why not? So we changed the plan. Next morning, he took us down, got down there early, put it on his, on his rubber duck and we started heading up Lake Nyasa towards Tanzania. And then after a while, he said to us, hey, but a problem, he's running out of petrol. So I said, okay, so like, what does that mean now? Now he's got another container, but that's enough to get him back. So I said, okay, so what, what, yeah, what, do we, what do we do? <laughs> so he said, well, you can come back with me if you want to, or I can throw you off here on the bank. And he says, there's a perfectly good path. Hmm. You just walk north and you'll, you'll get to a place called Metangula and it'll be safe. And then you can, from there, you can get another boat. So I said to God, what, what do we do? So I said, well, yeah, let's take a chance. I said, well, okay. So he, he took us to the shore and there, was, there were four sailors there. I've still got photos of them. My word. And I, we'd say, so chucked us off. And so I spoke to the, the because they can't speak, uh, there they can't speak English or a Portuguese, because you know, most of them speak Portuguese. Mm-hmm. I can only speak their own lingo. So I, I saw to the one cattler there, I said to him, morning, morning, morning. And he said, he said, morning. So I said, you, you speak English? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's yeah, uh, Fanagolo. Mm. So I said, oh, we, you know, he worked on the mines in South mm. Africa. Mm. So I said, oh, we are Kulumi Zul. He says, yeah, we are Kulumi Zul. Mm. So I said, oh, so we, we, you know, we, had a, we had a good chat. So I said to him, oh, well, great. So we got our backpacks and the three of us. And I said, well, I'm just going to go and find the path. So he said to me, uh, which path? Another boat had gone. Mm. So I, I said, well, the path to Metangula. So apparently it's a lovely path. He said, there's no path, yeah? This mm. is a wild jungle. So I said, Jeez. okay, so like, what do we do? He says, no, well, there's nothing you can do. You, you, we, we got dropped here because yeah. now they're local fishermen and they spend like three, four months there. But they get dropped and then a guy will come and fetch the fish and take it to the big town. So I said to so the guys, well, so what are we well, going to do? Yeah. yeah, what do we do? So I said, we can't walk back that way because it's too mountainous. Mm. And the guy said to me, you'll never get back that way. So I said, well, what are other options? He said, you're going to walk through the bush. So I said, okay. So I said to the guy, well, what do we do? Yeah, what do we need to what be we aware do? of? Yeah. yeah. So now we put on our backpacks and I walk in. I can't find any path. I thought maybe he doesn't know there's a path. So I looked, came back to see the guys, there's no path. Yeah. So I said, okay, so what do we do? We just got to walk north through the bush. Oh. So I had Ryan, my, my one son, mm. and a friend of mine, Paul Khalil, and, uh, and then I myself. So I said, okay, let's go. Let's start walking. Yes, and we walked. And I was, I was thrashing the bush, you know, to get mm. us through. Jeez. And, uh, and we walked for like a whole day, and I, and, and I was walking in the front. Now, if you get bitten by a stake there or a black mamba or a mfezi, mm. you die there. Mm. You, you cannot get a person out. There's no cell comms. There's, there's no paths. There's no roads. There's nothing. You, you just have to bury the oak there. Jesus. Why? <laughs> why know, are we I, doing I, this I don't stuff? know why. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, it's, 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 an, it's I'm, <laughs> hey? just, yeah. I don't know. I do it. Shit. So anyway, so interesting enough, I came around a corner. And I was like in the front. And the next thing I come around the corner, there's an oak standing there, just with a pair of pants on, in the middle of nowhere. We've walked for like a day and a half now. And he's standing there completely cold cut, except for his little pair of underpants. Really? So we came face to face. So I said to him, uh, Metangula, which is the, the next town. So I said, Metangula. So he says, Metangula. I said, okay, thank you. We're going to Metangula. Like I'm thinking, where's this I come from? He's just standing yeah, there. Yeah, he's standing there. Yeah. Where, where was this? In the jungle? In the bush, in yeah. the jungle. He was just in the jungle. Right in the middle of the jungle. So I said to that guy, uh, so I met Ngula, he said, met Ngula. So I said, we look at each other and he's like, and he thinks like I'm on my own and I'm looking at him. And we like look at each other. The next thing he sees my son walk around the corner. So he looks and he sees my son and he like, he sort of accepts that. And then he, then he, and he can hear wrestling and he looks and he sees Paul come around the corner. But Paul's got a, a poncho on from the Rhodesian army. Hey. So he, th- he thinks maybe we're army oaks. Yeah. 
he, I promise you this guy did a Bolt. 180. Eh? And he, he spun around and did a 180 and he just ran into the bush. So now we're standing there, three of us, these little Piswilly South Africans. Mm. So like we're like all looking at each other and I'm saying, well, What's what, going what do we do? So I think he's either going to call his mates and come and bloody bulala us, kill mm. us. What do we do? So I said, well, there's nothing we can do. We just got to keep walking. Mm. So I said, well, okay, let's just keep walking. So we just carried on walking through the bush, mm. slashing. And eventually, like after 20, 30 minutes, I said, well, he hasn't come back and he's probably not going to know where we are now. Mm. So we're probably quite safe. So we just carried on walking and then eventually we put up a tent, slept and it poured with rain. Mm. What were you eating at this time? No, we just had, we had some char. We, yeah. we, had, like, we had like rat packs and, mm. you know, like peanuts and raisins and, yeah. and that sort of stuff. And you're on a lake as well, so you can get water. Mm. Yeah. We had purification tablets. Were you trying to fish off the lake? Or? No, no, no. no, no. We, did, we did have a fishing rod, but we, by now we're inland a bit, you see. So. Sure. And, uh, eventually, and where exactly is this now? It's, between, it's sort of between a place called, um, yeah, where would it? Uh, it's just it's sort of just south of Metangula, and further so you you you're sort of halfway up Lake Malawi, okay, Lake Nasa, then you get Metangula, then you get Kobwe, and then from Kobwe we we crossed to an island called Lakoma Island. But it was interesting. We came into these villages, and uh, they, they, the last thing in the in, in their lives they expected to see three zungus come out the bush, mm. Mm. like the guy that was half naked, and. We came into these villages and these kids just screamed, eh? mm. and they just ran away and they hid. And I, you, they've never ever seen zungus, zungus. in their lives. So they must ever. have been like white walkers. Yeah, yeah. What's happening yeah. here? Yeah, and, and <laughs> interesting Yo. enough, I can guarantee that I can, I can, I can tell you now without a doubt, there's never been another zungu there since we were there. No, wow. there's no crazy oak gonna walk there. Yeah, no crazy oak's gonna walk there. Yeah, so. It's it's interesting and so what were the what were the locals like when they saw you guys now were they like just, whoa who are these guys they must have yeah they, well, well what, interesting so Ryan my one son Ryan Tyron mm. Stumbi he had the big jab eh? yeah the big beard and he had long hair and he looked like Jesus so that's probably it's, what they thought and they shouted Jesus but now they but now Jesus. they've never seen Jesus before yeah no so but what they, 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 they've, they've seen pictures about I've seen yeah. it yeah. pictures so, depictions. Depictions, yeah, but yeah, yeah. long hair, beard. Long hair. Yeah, so he looked just Jesus. like Jesus. Yeah. And they were shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm saying, no, 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 it's not Jesus. It's not Jesus. Oh my and they're saying, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. I say, no, it's not Jesus. I'm <laughs> thinking Jesus. they're going to come out and come, yo, Jesus. Yeah. They're going to come out there and lynch him. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm like, do you what? think that they're living an amazing life, though? They don't have any from other a life. Perspective, from Every, a perspective. Everything that's perspective. around them is only what they've collected from the bush. Exactly. Yeah. Because when you look at how we've evolved, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaga Zulu days, yeah, we yeah, had yeah, our yeah. bear shoes and yeah, all yeah, of that yeah. stuff. Um, and then obviously colonizing and all of that stuff happened. Yeah. But I'm trying to think if I was still chill, still chilling with my red underpants, running from <laughs> Tongat to Stanga with yeah. my uh, spears yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Bear shoe. First of all, I'd have a six pack. Yeah, yeah. Second of all, would I care You'd about cell phones? Would I care <laughs> yeah. about cell phones? Yeah. Would I care no, about cell phones? They don't know anything there. They don't know yeah. anything there. Their the, the roofs are, are grass. Yeah. Their walls yeah. are mud. It's survival. They, they, right they there. survive. They go and catch a couple of animals. They catch fish on the lake. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's them. And, and, but are um, they happy? They are so happy. I think uh, they are. Listen, absolutely listen, they, fine. They, I think so too. Yeah. The amount of children they've got, they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> they just, that's like, another production. One, two, three, four. No, sure. there's just thousands of little oaks running around there. And there was no tribal chief there. No, we didn't We didn't uh, meet anybody. We didn't stay in the, the villages, obviously, for long. Yeah. The, the one village we came into, that particular village, as we came in there, the thunderstorm happened, like a massive thunderstorm. And, that, and Jesus has just brought Jesus in the arrived, whole yeah, yeah. rain Jesus now. brought the rain. Yeah, Yo. yeah, yeah. He's, he's part of the waters. Yo. And, uh, they, and they're, all, they're little guys. So they said to us, go into one of the little rooms to, to, just to, for the storm to pass. Mm. And we went in with our backpacks on our back. And you've got to go right down like this and squat down because they, they're all small guys. Mm. So they build their house according oh. to, their, to their height, yeah. Wow. Oh, the, they, they're short. Yeah, they're shortish. They're not like, I mean, they're, not, they're, they're sort of average. I mean, you, you get into Kenya, you've got these giant, of, giant guys. Now in, mm. in that area of Mozambique, the guys are short. So mm. their roofs are lower. They don't need yeah, lots they don't of need to go. Yeah. There's a lot oh, of um, American explorers that do come down to yeah. Lake Malawi yeah. and all of that. And lots of them are trying to find uh, 
the missing dinosaurs yeah, yeah, and yeah, the Mukelem yeah, yeah. Bebe. I don't know mm. if you heard about that. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They come all the way down to Africa and they try and like, you know, find yeah, this. Yeah. What, what's your, what's your, your say on these sort of um, the dinosaur conspiracies? conspiracies? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've, we've been into the like extremely remote areas. Um, mm. And not a lot of the times, not because we want to be there. Mm. It's just, it just mm. happened. We've mm. ended up there. Mm. Uh, Chad's got sick and we had to get on a boat and sail up Lake Malawi. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't really get involved in much of that. Um, like people ask me, like, especially like, why do you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, those guys generally, a lot of them are missionaries. They mm -hmm. come down and they want to spread the, the word and mm -hmm. they sail around the lake and try and convince people to become Christians or, or whatever religion. Mm -hmm. So I'm there on a, on a purely different purpose, you know, like, what I don't know you, what, I don't know why. What are you looking for? I don't know. I, that's a good question because, you know, um, I've always done these things. So, so basically, as I said, I started off by doing Comrades, Iron Man, Doozy, Two Oceans, all that sort of stuff. Then you get to a point where like, like um, you know, what is next? Mm. Uh, and then I thought, well, okay, so let me do adventure racing. And like people say, oh, you actually never do it. You'll never finish those races. Mm. And we didn't finish them all, but we, we did exceptionally well when we did finish. And so that was the next level. So then, I'd, I'd sort of made myself a promise that if I'm going to have children, I'm going to be around for these guys. Mm. And um, I, I want to I see every rugby match, every basketball match, every cricket match, mm. whatever, you know, galas, water polo matches. So, so people said, well, why don't you get into this a lot earlier in your life, traveling through Africa and taking people exploring and whatever. And I said, purely because I don't want to miss my, my kids having sports matches. I don't want someone to tell me how Chad scored a try or, mm. or they won a brilliant game against Office or whatever. So I, I could have done it a lot earlier, but because of my family commitments, I didn't. But there is an attraction there. And my, mm. I started off, my dad was an adventurer. And so I remember when I was at college, you know, they, they come around and they, you've got to fill in those forms and tick, mm. you know, what box, you know, what you'd like to do and what you'd like to do. And, mm. and then eventually they tell you, you must become a lawyer and you must become an accountant. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, all that rubbish. They yeah. told me yeah. I'll be yeah. a doctor. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's about <laughs> physics and maths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you plug maths. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, how am I going to be a doctor now? Yeah. 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 Not operating on me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so like I always remember fitting these things and then thinking, all I want to do is travel there. You know, mm -hmm. And that's why I sailed when I was at school as well. I just wanted mm -hmm. to explore and I wanted to get to these places. And remember when I sailed up to Mozambique, the war was on. Yes. yes. So South Africans were like, Eesh, you know, bad eh? yeah. You weren't even allowed to go to sh shore there as a South African. Sure. Because mm -hmm. they want to lynch you there because you're mm -hmm. South African and you're, and you're Mlungu. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so there's just something that attracts me to these wild remote mm -hmm. areas, uh, whether it's because – um, a lot of them haven't, like a lot of people haven't been there and trying to be the first people to, to get to these areas. Obviously I have pe people, but not mm. for years. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's born into you. You know, mm. you, it's like, as I said earlier, you like, I say to guys, like, are we doing another trip now? And um, we're leaving on the 20th of November and we're going to go to Zambia, Northern Zambia. And we're going to follow the bat migration. Mm. It's crazy. There's 10 million bats that migrate from one forest to another every day. Sure. And it only happens at a particular time of year because the fruit in that forest is only sort of available to the bats like in October, November, December. So everybody, a lot of it's people amazing. go up there and you watch their back migrate. You wake up in the morning and then they leave the forest. And they fly 10 million of them Jesus. back to their home base. And then in the evenings they leave and they go back to the forest to feed. So there's 10 million of these bats. Wow. So we're going to go up there and follow the migration. And then we'll travel all the way down, once back into Tanzania and then into Malawi and then into Mozambique and then finish off down there. But yeah, it's just crazy. Um, mm. You're born with it. You're born with it. You're born with it. You know, it's like, it, it sure. is, you know, it's it's amazing. Because like, like, I get upset when it rains and I'm in the car. <laughs> yeah, 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 Imagine yeah. raining in the jungle. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we I mean, we've been, I mean, a friend of mine, Chris Morris and I, we paddled down Lake Malawi mm. in one of our many trips. And um, we'd been paddling all day. And eventually, like, I started to get rough. And there was a storm brewing. And we went a double kayak, kayak, we had our tents and all that stuff. I said to him, Chris, we better pull over because we're going to get hammered by the storm. So we managed to pull over. We found a little village. 
We went in there and we put up our two little tents, our boat and our two tents. And, and we went to the local guy there and we said, can we have some hot water? And we made some noodles and we had some chow. And eventually about seven o'clock, you know, it gets dark. There's nothing yeah. else to do. Yeah. Two, two useless lungus. So I said, well, we go to sleep. 10 o'clock, a storm came. Yeah. It came like a raging storm. Yeah. Like, like the thunder was right there. Yeah. The lightning was right there. Yeah. It was like right above us. And it, and it came, and it came with wind. And it blew my tent away yeah. completely. So eventually I was, I was stuck, just me and my tent. And Chris, there was no space in his tent because we were only like one-man tents. Yeah. So I'd remembered, I'd, I'd seen further down the lake, I'd seen like a little grass gazebo like a broken down one, but it was enough to like maybe crawl in in there and have a dos. So I thought, well, that's my only option. I'm soaking wet. I'm going to, it's a long night. It's 10, 11 o'clock at night. It's got a long night to go. I'm going to go and try and, and I'd remember seeing a boat coming from the sea, from the lake, and three sailors were on it, local guys. So I walked down the lake and, and I, I looked inside and there were three guys sleeping in there. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, they all squashed up together and they had a, one headlamp hanging from a, from a, just like a hook here. And I never forget it. So like I'm thinking, okay, this is my only option there. So I grabbed the one oaks toe and I was like, toe. <laughs> and you woke up and you looked and you're like, and he's just, he's looking at a zungu mm-hmm. in the middle of the night. And he's thinking, where on earth did this I come from? So I said to him, come, make, roll it, open up. Oh, geez. So they made a space, they and sh- shuffled up. And, you and just I got in, I got spooned, in there. I promise you, That's I got in awesome, there. Man. I spooned in with these oaks. And uh, there was drips, like- there was drips here, drips there, whatever. I just lay there with these other whole night. And the next morning, did they not like, ask like, hey, no, where no, are you from, bro? No one, no one. You just, just cuddled. They just, yeah, I just cuddled with they these understood. oaks. They understood the assignment. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, okay. I cuddled up to these oaks, mm. and then were you um, the big spoon or the small spoon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, there was no physical attraction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes but so, those are like moments that you, moments. you have to make those decisions. Yeah. Mm. So I, cr- I cuddled up there. And then early in the morning, I woke up and then I crawled out because I was going to go back to Chris and see how he's doing in his mm. Ronnie tent. And to this day, I mean, like I give a lot of motivational talks and that. And to this day, those guys must think, when, what actually happened? Yeah. Was they, this real? They probably thought you were like a, yeah. like, like like a, a divine ghost. beast yeah. or, yeah. you yeah. know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I just pulled in. Lost the night. And they'd probably yes. never seen a white guy before. Imagine being yeah. asleep yeah. and then now. A Zungu. Yeah, a yeah. Zungu. Now yeah. you're pulling in. Like, that That's was like crazy. northern Mozambique. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, um, I snuck out probably at five in the morning, went were, back to Were Chris. you scared of them though? No, at any not, point? At all, no, not, not at all. No, no, no. There was just mozzies and mm. uh, just yeah. mosquitoes does and rain. It, it stormed from 10 o'clock at night until five o'clock in the morning. And wow. The longest hours. storm I've ever experienced. Mm. And the lightning was right there. Sure. And, uh, yeah, I sort of crawled out, went back to Chris. Hey, Chris, wake up. Got in our boat, got out, sort of managed to bit of find a bit of my tent. And we got in our, and we sailed and we, and we paddled off. Mm. Would, it would be so epic if this reel that Dane makes like explodes and one of these oaks is sitting there at home and his kids <laughs> yeah. on TikTok <laughs> and, and it comes out and he actually like yeah. comments on our post. Hey, you know what yeah. I mean? That well, would be yeah, well, epic. What I'm going to do is I'll share mm. this um, with, because I've obviously got lots of mates in Malawi now, yeah, like, and 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 northern Mozambique. Mm. Uh, there's a guy Francis, you know, we we rely on him a lot. There's another guy Blessings, he's down south in Malawi and Cape mm. McClear. That's we're going back there to see him, see yeah. them, yeah, yeah. But out of all the crazy things and adventurous things that you've done, why would you go see gorillas? Gor- I've, I've heard about yeah, that when we were reading. Why okay, so, you know, so so what actually happened was. Because you're not trying to see those guys yeah. out in the public. I have seen videos of gorillas, <laughs> man, and they, yeah. But they're they, monsters. Yeah. They're, mon- they're not really that they're, they're, they're big. But they're they are, silverback gorillas. Yeah, silverback. yeah, that's about they're, my height. They are yeah, yeah. strong. <laughs> they are yeah. strong. Yeah. So, so basically what happened was, so Paul and I had done this trip, and then Ryan, the, one, of the, one of the trips, as I said, there were many more. And um, I'd sort of try to convince Paul to do another trip, and he'd like, nah, nah, nah. So we went down to watch the Queen concert. An old, uh, mm. old, old mm. Red, what's his name? He's at college the, with you guys. The, the, the lead guitarist. Of I Queen. No, yo, he was at college, but he... he, he Russ, what's his name? Not Red Mead. Um, um, yeah, the red, he's a red-headed guy. Rusty Red. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 he was at college, yeah. but he, he, he did... Maybe the, he's older than us. Yeah, he yeah. did the lead... He was the lead guitarist for the Queen show down okay. in Okay. Oh, so nice. anyway, we had tickets, so we were going to go. So... 
we arrived down there, we, we had to spur there and we're having a chat. And so Paul's like brave. He says, oh, so when are you doing another trip? So I said, um, in July next year. So he says, oh, are you? So I said, yeah. So he says, can I come? So, I, so he leans across to his wife and he says, uh, Ian says they're doing another trip in July. Can I go? Yeah. Will you run the business? So she says, yeah, for, for sure. Visa, yeah. Yeah, so like, no, I'm Visa thinking, check. Which, once once yeah, your wife says you can go, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. there's no approved, turning you can back. Go. Sure yeah. leave. Yeah. So like, he says, where are you going? So like, I just made up all of this stuff. I'm going there, 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 there. It was all made up. Mm. I, I wasn't planning to go anywhere. And then, he, then he's in. So then we decided, okay, so then I got, then I, then, then I was obviously contracted to, to Go Magazine. Mm. Go Magazine. Yeah, so I wrote, uh, six months for them, mm. so they they sponsored my my, my trip, and I wrote uh, twenty four pages for the last three editions of Go mm -hmm. and the and Vech, obviously Vech magazine. Mm. So so we were initially going to do just like Great Lakes, which would have been Uganda, um, possibly Rwanda, um, then Lake Victor Lake yeah all the lakes and the Great Lakes of um, Uganda, Lake Victoria, Lake George, Lake Edward, and Lake Albert, then Lake Tanganyika. Lake Malawi, Lake Nasa, and then back home. So anyway, so I, so I got all to go, and they, they, we spoke, and they said, yeah, can you write for us and all that? So I said, no problem. So um, uh, my English teacher at college, where I spent seven years, he'd be frightfully d depressed if you could see that I could write a story <laughs> for him. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah, I was like a thickest oak at college. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so then, 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 so like we're there now, so like I'm thinking, okay, it's like, how's my story going to be based? So then I thought, well, we're right there in Rwanda. Let's maybe do the, do the gorillas. Mm. So I contacted a couple of oaks and whatever. And then I got hold of a lady in, um, up in Joburg. And she owned Explore Africa. This, this company oh, here. Explore Africa. Yeah, plus, yeah. Okay, Explore Plus. So she, yeah, so I said to her, listen, we want to go and see the gorillas. Do go Uganda, Rwanda, whatever. So she like, we spoke. And then she says, well, if you're writing, you know, can you mention us and, mm. you know, Give a nice spread for us. I said, yeah, no problem. So then she says, no, she she'll take us to the to Rwanda guerrillas. Now, if you if you if you go to Rwanda, believe it or not, it's the cleanest country in the world. I you believe heard about it, yeah. so. I've hey. been I've been seeing a yeah. lot of that. There hey. isn't a, there is there isn't a piece of paper anywhere in that country it's on a, the floor. It's a Cape Town. No, it's better than Cape Town. Really? No, no, it's, it's, the best, yeah. it's the best country in the world I've been wow. to. Wow. Yeah. Every Friday is National Cleanup Day, and every month is a massive National Cleanup Day. Can you, you imagine you, that in South South Africa? Africa. Yeah. You, go, you go to the bus stop there. There are thousands of buses all going in different directions. You can't find a piece of paper on the floor. No There's ways. nothing. There's, there isn't a piece of paper. Anyway. Sure. Long, that's, that's and they, they've wonder. come from a rough history yeah, yeah, in Rwanda yeah. with they, the they genocide. Had, genocide. That. That. Sure. So... She said, well, listen, she'll organize us. And she, she organized this trip. Eh? So we, we went from um, Kampala in Uganda. Well, we, we, so, for, so first we made our way our own way into Uganda. Mm. We got to Entebbe and we went to look for the Shubal stalk, which is one of the most highly <gasps> sought after. Have you seen yeah, one? Yeah, we found one. Yeah. That is yeah. a dinosaur, bro. Yeah, it's a dinosaur. Wow. That thing yeah. is a dinosaur. Have you <laughs> the, seen that? No, no, it's, the, it's, the bird. Yeah, it's yeah, the, it's yeah. the most bizarre bird I've yeah, ever yeah. seen. Not in real life. Well, yeah. I mean, I've seen footage of it. I've oh, been interested. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the size. Yeah, it sounds like a like a real. Like it a is a it's, it's it's called it's a shubu because its foot its beak is like a clog. Yeah, and oh. it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll show it's you a, pictures it's a of dinosaur. it. Yeah. So have you yeah. have you seen yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went and found it. And how big are they? No, they're about that about that big. Sure. They say yeah. those are like they saying that's one of the dinosaurs that have oh, been oh, left birds, behind. Yeah. Really? yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, so we wow. found the, the shubu stalk, and then from there we we went from because we found it in Entebbe. In, on Lake Victoria. That is phenomenal. Yeah. They, they eat crocodiles. Yeah, yeah, baby what crocodiles. The, yeah, like baby they crocodiles. eat crocodiles. Lego oh, that's the day. Yeah. You have to yeah. put a picture of this bird in this reel because that yeah, thing yeah. is yeah. unbelievable. I've seen yeah. these pictures. Unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. I can't believe you've seen yeah, one. Yeah. And yeah. what was we were, it like? No, it was incredible. We, we, so you go from one boat, little boat, to a smaller boat, and then you go into the, it's called the Mbamba Swamps. Okay. Lake, Lake uh, Victoria. And then the guide will take you and he takes you through all these swamps and then he finds it and then he stops and then you, and he stands and he, I'll show you pictures. He looks at you like this and he just watches you and then he just, it's incredible. As yeah. I say, it's about that tall. Wow. It's, 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 it's called the Shubal Stalk. Jurassic Park. 
Those guys, yeah. you know, those guys that fly, you know, those guys that fly. That's wow. him. Yeah, that's wow. him. That's him. Yeah. Wow. That's so him. every bird that wants to find the sheep will stalk. Okay, which we found on day one. Wow. wow. Anyway, from nice. there we we had to get, then go to um, Kampala. Long story. Buses, taxis, whatever. And then from there we caught a, a, a fifteen-hour bus trip from Kampala, uh, Uganda, to to Kigali in Rwanda. Mm. We spent a night there, and then we caught another taxi, another taxi, another to the to the um, Volcanoes National Park. And then, um, so to see the gorillas, we didn't pay this because we were sponsored sort of basically by these guys. To see the gorillas for one hour, you'd pay 50,000. 50,000 what? Rands. For one hour. One hour. And what, do you, what does see the gorillas okay, mean? Okay, so when I say see the gorillas, so uh, you, you, and once again, it's, it's just incredibly organized. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not Africa at all. <laughs> <laughs> It's like incredibly It works. Us. You get, you get, you get, like they said, now we go to the gorilla headquarters and then we leave from there on a safari vehicle. So we get to this gorilla headquarters. It's like a, just a, it's like a big area where they've got these like circles where you all sit around in a circle. Each, and then each, like eight of those guys will get into that vehicle and they go and look for gorillas. You get there, there's, there's a, a proper functioning restaurant where you can have as much coffee as you want in the morning before you get put onto your safari guide. Mm. Um, and then you, you get, you can choose, like, do you want a one hour walk, five hour walk, mm. six hour walk? So, you know, the South Africans, we like Main Oaks. Like, no, we'll take a six hour walk. Yeah, straight up. Did we regret that. Eh? Mm. Anyway, so then you get into a safari guide and, he, and he'll take you. And then you drive. We drove for like two hours to get to the point where you can't go anymore because the road is so bad. And you jump out and you start walking up into the mountains, but you go with a guide. Mm. Is he armed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of okay. course, they all got AK-47s. Yes. Remember, gorillas are like humans. Yeah. So when you go to sleep at night, the gorilla goes to sleep at night. Mm. And when he wakes up in the morning, you wake up in the morning. Mm. So what they do in Rwanda is, um, so, and obviously you've got to find these gorillas. Mm. You know, you, it's a huge jungle. So what they do is, um, every, so you, you, you're with your guide, he's got a radio, and then he talks to a guy in the jungle. So the way they know where to take you is in the afternoon. So you, in the morning, the, 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 the guide will be, he, he'll be up there with the gorillas. So before the gorillas wake up, he's left his village and he's walked up through the jungle because he knows where they're sleeping. And then he'll, he'll sit 20 meters away from them. Yeah. And they all wake up and stretch and get, grab a couple of leaves and yeah. do whatever they need to do. Then as soon as they start moving, the gorillas, so the guide with his AK-47, he moves with the gorillas through the jungle. Okay. Then he's got a radio, you've got a radio. Then our guide will say to him, where are you now? And he'll say, I'm northwest, south, whatever, and they're moving slowly through here. So then he'll guide you through the forest to where the gorillas are. Then you sit with them for one hour and you can so interact you, with them. So we're sitting oh, like they, they find I them. I can touch them. And they don't mind. They don't mind. Wow. And, and are they nice? Beautiful. Because yeah. they also like, yo, who's this white guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they also nice. like, no, yeah. they sit there and do yeah. their own thing and they yeah. go around, they sleep. Mm. Um, and then when we leave, no the guard stays with them. So they're not aggressive. Yeah. Not aggressive at all. So the guard will stay with them until they go to sleep. Okay. You see? Yes. So then he knows where they're sleeping. So then he goes home. And in the early morning, he, he leaves home. And he's there. So they think he's with them 24-7. Yeah, yeah. And also, so, so he can track them. So we, mm. you're guaranteed to see the, the gorillas. So by the time he gets there, they've already woken up and they're sitting around waiting to mm. start feeding. So he gets there and he sits and he waits and they start moving. Then he'll radio down and say, okay, they're moving south now. Mm. Do you want to bring your guards up here? Yeah. So the gorillas, so you get there and then we had a group of 12 gorillas with babies right mm. through. And... Um, yeah, they, you know, they, they'll run and bump you. Yeah, they run, really? yeah, they run past you. They'll yeah. bump you. They, I mean, they knock people over. Yeah. So, but before you leave up there, they teach you gorilla etiquette. Okay. They, they teach you how to speak gorilla. Okay. And it's not like a joke. Give us no, a, really? Give us I, a mean, I thought you were going to yeah, say yeah, it. No, I'm yeah. you. So, yeah, I, I've, I've forgotten how, how gorilla <laughs> speaks, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So, so if he, if he does, if he, if he goes, <laughs> then you must do it back to him. <laughs> Really? Then he's then he's comfortable that oh, you know okay. we, we, we so are you okay. understand me yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and then if he you know he does this yeah. then he's yeah. getting a bit pissed off eh? oh, oh, really? oh yeah, then he's getting a bit cross yeah then you got to be careful then you oh. then you just go down 
Oh. And you squat S- down. Submit. Yeah, you submit. Yeah. And yeah. you just say to like, no, nah, dude, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. And then they'll just be eating and then, then you know, the babies are picking a leaf here yeah, and, and whatever. Yeah, it's an incredible experience. It's Amazing. like, so we, we weren't going to do it because it's so expensive. Yeah. So I said to the guys, listen, we're going to be in the area. It's like a lifetime thing. It's going to cost you, we paid 23,000 each yeah. as opposed to 50 plus. Mm. And it was organized, this, this girl, Rita, Rita, uh, Rika from Explore, she, she set it up for us, buses, taxis, whatever. And it was just an incredible experience. So it's like, it was never on my bucket list to mm. go and see the gorillas because it's just so expensive. I did go to Gabon with my th- three boys and a mates of mine. And we, we looked for gorillas in Gabon, which is in West Africa. We spent a month there. It's mm. a French country. Mm. We hiked through that jungle. We found gorilla, uh, chimpanzees. We found mandarins. We found leatherback turtles. We never found a gorilla. But anyway, there it was wild as well. My kids were still growing up in those sure. days. Um, so it was, yeah, in Gabon, I wanted to go there because it's a wild country. And it's very unexplored and the mm. jungles, and I'm, I'm a tree man, so the trees are massive. Um, but yeah, so the, the gorillas were never really on my bucket list. But I said to guys, mm. we're there. Have you got the bucks? So obviously, yeah. the, uh, Ryan, uh, myself and Dumbi, we, we split a split the costs. But yeah. just for the two of us to go and see those gorillas cost 50 grand. Wow. But you know what? It's, it's a lifetime experience. Yeah, you can never. And uh, it's yeah. like the shoe bill, you know. Yeah. So wow. Ryan, my son, um, you know, he was a gun at college. Yeah, right? yeah. And, but now he, he works for um, Rock Jumpers Birding. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the top, uh, which is one of the top um, birding companies in the world. And he's one of the lead guides there now. Mm. From a flipping. That's amazing. Rugby, rugby man. And the gorillas, yeah. aren't they the sort of animals to build bonds with people? So they, they don't want you to build bonds with them. Oh. Yeah, so you're only allowed to spend one hour with Who's them. Who's they? Yeah, the, just the locals. Oh, the locals. The local. okay. But and, they and do tend to build a bond yeah, with Yeah, they do, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they, so the, the local, like the guides will know those gorillas as well. Mm. But what's also interesting is like every year the, the, the babies are born. And if you want to pay 100,000 like US dollars or 100,000 rand, then you can go to you can the take same, one home. And you can go to the naming ceremony. So you pay huge amounts of money and then you, you go there and they name every baby gorilla in Rwanda. Mm, so every wow. gorilla has got a name, every wow, baby. Wow. But then you're paying huge big, big, big bucks for that. Um, obviously, we, we could never afford that. South Africans mm. can't afford that. Yeah. But it's an incredible experience. And, and, and interestingly enough, the gorillas in Rwanda on, are like on the increase hugely. That's good. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Wow. So wild yeah. and untamed mm. is uh, what exactly exactly that. That's that, Ian. Yeah, that's Ian. Wild and untamed. That that is so awesome. Yeah. Um, I think there's still a lot more in terms of your journey. Um, we always talk to guests here and we say, look, we can vlog an experience. No, but no, I think no, I'm, in not, this one, I'm not doing, I'm sitting <laughs> I think out this one. I I'm sitting out of this Just one. enjoy <laughs> it. We'll maybe get you a GoPro or something and you can send us the We can maybe what just we, put a logo yeah. on, your, on your shirt to say <laughs> load shed and yeah, load shed, flashlight yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But um, um, no, we're, doing a, we're doing a hike down the wild coast. We also do local hikes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, right. and so, that's something you can do. So one of those we could possibly do. No, I promise you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not agreeing. We can do those. I'm not agreeing. We could do those. It's just the ones where oaks are like, uh, Bro, I don't know. I'm, uh, I, f- no, I think we're coast. in the south coast, but we might we could be in the north. Now you got to swim across rivers. Yeah, why don't we just uh, go to Vic Falls in Zimbabwe? But have you had any <laughs> crazy encounters with some dangerous animals like crocodiles, snakes? Yeah. Okay. So I did have one on this last experience. Okay, and um, I've had well, I've had two. Um, I'll tell you both of them. So this last trip, we were on uh, um, Lake Malawi. There's a place called Lakoma Island, and we were staying at a place called. Mango Drift, and we were all sort of putting up our tents and that. There was a canoe there. I said, oh, I'll go. I'm going to go for a paddle. So I would drift Casual. it off, and I saw two fish eagles on the, on the corner there. Um, they're sitting feeding. It was probably maybe three k's away. So I thought, I'm going to paddle down there. So I was paddling down by myself, and I got just below the tree up there, and they were busy eating their, their fish, these two fish eagles. And then suddenly I realized that I got stuck. So like I've been stuck on rocks before, you know, doozy, mm. umka mask, new marathon, whatever. So I think, okay, so I just move my bum and I'll get off this rock. And I couldn't move. Yeah. So I thought, okay, so that's a bit strange. Like, why not moving? Like it must be quite a big rock. So yeah. carry on going like this, I won't move. So then then suddenly I see my boat starts to drift to the right. Oh my. Yeah. 
And I thought, you got to be joking me. Croc. Got a croc. You got to be joking yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And I'd read stories about oaks getting charred by crocs. Yeah. So the next thing, the boat starts to tilt like this. Mm, then, 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 then I thought, I'm done. Mm. Then I thought, I'm, oh, this is me. I've done all these trips <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Life is flashing. I promise by, you, yeah. it, it, it went down like that. And then it pulled me right like that. And I tried to get away and I couldn't get away. Then it started pulling me left and I was trying to keep myself up from going over because I knew if I went over, I'm done. It's gone. And it, and it, and it and pulled me t- over again. And then I just paddled on my paddle for my life. And, and the boat sort of swung around and I was facing out into the lake. And this guy, had a, he had grip of my boat. Mm. Oh, so he grabbed you from the Yeah, back. he must have grabbed underneath, yeah, mm. yeah. from the back. Mm. And I just, I just paddled as hard as I could and I just thought, this is my life right here. Mm. Mm. And I paddled and I paddled and I got away. And I just paddled and I started looking back just to see, looking for a snorkel behind mm, me, mm. like chasing me. And I paddled and I Was paddled. he chasing you? I couldn't see him anymore. Mm. So we, I got out. And then I saw Paul and Josh, uh, Paul and Josh, father and son, paddling down towards me. And I said, I went there and I said, you're not going to believe it. I've mm. just been attacked by this bloody crocodile. Mm. They said, push it. I said, no, I'm telling you. So, well, let's go and have a look. So, <laughs> so the three of us paddled. Of course. Hey, let's I, go and back. And so looked, you went back. Yeah, yeah. we went back. <laughs> And the next yeah, thing I, looked, and I just see the shadow under the water. And I just said to the guys, let's just paddle there. Eh? It's such got, a Zungu we, we move. Just, that is around. the most Zungu thing in the Zungu world. Because I can there. assure you, <laughs> we yeah. would not join no, you. Yeah. I've just that. been attacked by a croc. Hey, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go let's check that out. Uh, no. So we swung around and we paddled away. Was he a big yeah, boy though? A big Must have been. I could see a shadow under the water. Five meters. Yeah, you see what happened was, at the moment, Lake Malawi is the highest it's been in 100 years. Because they've had massive floods. Remember that cyclone? Yes. So I think a lot of, like they've always said, there's no crocs there and it's quite safe. And there might be one random one. I think a lot of those crocs came down. Migrated. Yeah, in the floods mm. and they're on those islands and they didn't know about them. Jeez. Wow. Another time I was down at a place called Mkambati, down on the wild coast down here. Mm. And um, I was down there with some friends and I was on, a, on, um, on my bicycle. So I said to them, listen, I'll ride my bike ahead. You guys drive behind me and we're going to go down to a place called Gwekwe, which is three little rondovas on the lake, on the, on the sea. And it's a game reserve. And uh, so I was like riding and they were behind me in the Land Rover and, and we're driving. And the next thing, I, I got a feeling I wasn't, I was like someone was with me. And I looked to my right like this and I looked and there's a wildebeest. My and he's pulled goodness. in next to me. And, he's, and I'm, I'm riding and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me. And we're looking at each other. And, and the foster, I rode the foster he ran running next to me like that. And as I say, the folks were behind me in the, to, to witness it. Mm. And so I thought, no, flip, this is like, I cannot believe this is actually happening to me. So we were racing. And the next thing I look left like this and there's an elant. And an elant spilled in next to me. Mm. So there's an elant, and there's me and a wildebeest. Wacky races. And we're just winding it down that hill. Yeah. And, and we're looking at each other. They're looking at me. We're looking at them. They're looking at each other and we raced down that hill. We came down to the, um, to the cottages at Gwekwe. And as I came down like this, I thought to myself, this is, this is not happening. But luckily I got witnesses and we came down and as we came down to these cottages, they were empty. This one went that way and that one. That's so cool. It was an incredible experience. One of the yeah. most amazing things That's through amazing. all my journeys through Africa. They were like, hey, let's go with you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's so you're, awesome. yeah, so you're going to come to Wildcast. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, one last thing before yeah. we finish. Yeah. Um, there's this guy who's just ran the whole of Africa all the way. I think he came all the way to Cape Town. Yeah, you know, do you I know did, about that story? Yeah, I followed I didn't really follow it too closely. Mm. But he's just finished. He's finished he's in just Algeria. Finished. I think. Yeah. So he went up there. So that, yeah, he went from Cape Town to Algeria, mm. and he ran uh, like a marathon every single day. Crazy, 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 crazy. crazy. So there are crazy guys. I yeah. mean, you know that oak there. Then there's um, Ryan Sands, one of the longest ultra marathon runners in the world. Yes. Uh, then the, you've got um, uh, Kingsley Holgate. Mm. You know he does it, but he does it in the Land Rovers. Yes. Um, and then you've got this other guy. Rion Mansa, he's the guy who cycled around Africa. Yeah. And then he paddled around Madagascar. So there's some crazy oaks in South Africa. <clears throat> um, so we, we've all done our different things and our different mm. journeys. Um, and yeah, you know, like I'm 63 now. And like, I'm, like I did retire when we did our, myself and Ryan and Paul did that long trip through Africa. We finished in Zanzibar when we got, I found the half naked oak. Mm. I came back, I threw my backpack down and said, right, I'm done. That's I'm, it. I'm <laughs> And then, uh, like, 
You think, no, nah, I've got to do something else, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a big sacrifice because, you know, a lot of Oaks, they hoard their money and, like, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't have any money. And the money that I've got, I'm spending it on my lighties now. Mm. You know, so when I died, sorry, I said bugger all for you to fight mm, over because mm, I'm spending on a on, on you now. On you now. And mm. you know, these journeys are incredible. Eh? They mm. they they just bring the, be- the 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 best out in you. They're all different in every single way. I can take people that have never done these journeys, and I can I can I can't promise them anything. I can't promise them they're going to be a taxi waiting for them. Mm. Or the, I mean, we say on one last story. We this last trip, we were going to sail across Lake Malawi. Um, from a place called Nkata Bay to, to Lakoma Island. And then from Lakoma Island, we'd get another boat to a place called Kobwe, which is in the northern Mozambique on the, on the lake. So I said to guys, you know, how are we going to get across there? And like, because there's nothing's really planned. I don't have any plans. Mm. You know, it all happens on the day. Sure. So like I said to the guys, well, you know, there's, there is a speedboat going across here. Apparently it takes five hours and it's $450 for, to fill the speedboat. And we should be able to fill it. So it's four hundred and fifty dollars divided by four of us, five of us. So it's like just under nine, like ninety dollars each, which is mm. which is a lot. It's eight one thousand eight hundred rand each. Mm. But where we're we staying in the lodge, they said to us in this backpacking lodge. No, there's a ferry that leaves, goes across there. I said, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll should we take the ferry? And I said, we're gonna take the ferry. So we walk down there in the evening, and they said leaves at half past five. We get down there. I look across at this ferry and I think, ay, 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 ay. I'm not getting on that thing. Eh? Mm. Looking whack. So I thought, well, this is why we're here. So I'm going to get on that thing. Mm. So to get to that ferry, you've got to get another little boat. And these guys are fighting over your money and they've got long sticks and they mm. take you out to this boat and the boat's just about tipping over. We get onto this ferry and it's, you cannot squeeze another soul onto this thing. Mm. So we had nowhere to sit. So we went up front and sat on the anchor. So I said to the guy, how long is it going to take us to get to Lakama Island? He says, no, about three, four hours. Anyway, 12 hours later, mm. we were still chugging along. So a whole night. Jeez. A whole night. I promise you, so there was another ferry next to us there. It was empty. So I said to him, what, what about that ferry? He says, no, that one's broken. So all those people have got onto this one. Mm. So I said, are we going to cross Lake Malawi on this ferry? So, so the guys are saying, well, should we go and get the speedboat? I said, no, actually, we're already on this boat. We're mm. just going to do it. Yeah. We sat on that thing for 12 hours the whole night. Before we left, he did a little circle around the harbor just to make sure it didn't tip over. And then he sort of felt it was safe. And then he headed out to the ocean, into the lake, and off we went. 12 hours later, we got off the other side on Lake uh, on Lakoma Island, got there at five in the morning. Now we had to get across the mountain to where we were going to stay. And the only thing we could find was five drunk motorbike riders. So mm. we hired these guys, all drunk, because it's five in the morning on a Sunday morning, they all mm-hmm. drank. So we got our backpacks and we got on the back of these motorbikes and we hung on for dear life. And these guys raced us across the mountain to the other side and got to, we got to uh, Mango Drift at um, about six in the morning and we just slept harder. And then the yeah. next, three hours later, I was attacked by the crocodile. Jeez. But yeah, that's the journey. That's the yeah. journey we take. And, yeah. Um, you've, you've got stories for days, um, yeah, know, which is yeah, amazing. You don't, you don't have time. So. Um, <laughs> Just I'm one thing, yeah. how, does, how does somebody contact you to join you in one of these trips? Yeah, I mean, they can, you can, I'll give you my, my you've got my, my cell number. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so just, the guys if, can if, reach out to us. And, yeah, they can reach out. Right. Um, you know, generally speaking, uh, you've got to be wild and untamed. Straight To up. do these journeys. Um, you know, you know, people want like hotels and, and, and mm. fancy food and shower and they want a long drop and. Mm. and that sort of stuff so I can't promise that <clears throat> you know our journeys are different um, we wake up today we don't know where we're going today We could, because the ferry is broken or mm. trains derailed or whatever so you, you don't have any plan so they are wild and untamed that's the way we like it mm. and uh, you know I never want to put anyone in danger but and I know they're dangerous yeah but, so <laughs> but there's an attraction it's like yeah. A train alert. Drinking and driving. You know, you, yeah. you know you shouldn't be doing it, but yeah. you just have to or a drug addict. You know, yeah. like, I shouldn't be doing this, but geez, I need it. Yeah, cool, but it's not illegal. I mean, no, what uh, you yeah, do. Yeah, so yeah, that's the difference. Illegal. It's quite illegal. So, yeah, yeah. Ax can do it. They're, they're welcome. To, that's why I say I've taken It's like many, taking mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. I've taken many oaks through, through Africa. I thought yeah. you were going to say I've taken many mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah, Ian, that's Malawi awesome. Malawi gold. 
Thank you so much for coming through, man. That's a pleasure. I'm happy to meet you guys. Yeah. What a phenomenal what a, experience. What a yeah, great thing. I'm not going to say we're going to join you out in the vlogs. <laughs> we that would just be a lie. Yeah, we definitely need to a get a hold of your yeah. guy who's done Comrade's books yeah. as well because Comrade yeah. is coming up. So that would yeah, be a yeah. cool conversation. No, I'd love to, yeah, yeah, I'd love to get Steve. I'll send yeah. you his details. That would be awesome. And, Thank uh, you so he's much. in Durban, so you can yeah. meet him down there. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, and he's such an interesting person. Awesome. And him and I are like, because we've done these races together, we've bonded, we've spooned. Yeah, at minus forty when you degrees know. in a tent. That's when you know on the floor. Yeah. And, you know, you just like we always laugh. Yeah. And he says, "Yeah, it, it never happened." But that, that, that's, that's how we became friends as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. He, he, he spooned me as well. And that's yeah, the end of the show, the guys. <laughs> we will be back <laughs> next week with another awesome episode. Thank you so much. Yes. Wow, what a fantastic. phenomenal man! Yeah. Wow. Fantastic.